Hello, in this video we're going to show that the sum of the squares of reciprocals of positive integers is pi squared over 6. So this is a famous equality, but most of the proofs that I have seen are either not elementary, they use some form of complex numbers, um, analytic functions, something that is not elementary, or they are not rigorous enough. So here I want to present an elementary but rigorous proof for this identity. So the first thing is, in a previous video, I proved the identity that is in blue, which is cotan squared of pi over 2n plus 1 plus cotan squared of 2 pi over 2n plus 1 all the way to cotan squared of m pi over 2n plus 1 is equal to m times 2n minus 1 divided by 3. So you can check that out uh, at the upper right corner of the screen. I'm going to use this equality with some elementary calculus, the squeeze theorem, and then we are going to prove the identity. So the main thing that I'm going to be using is this inequality. So this is a famous one, sine of x is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to tangent of x, for every x in the first quadrant. Let me show you the, a simple proof for this one. There are proofs for this one using calculus, but there's also a pretty basic proof using just pre-calculus stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the unit circle and I'm going to draw the angle x here and I'm going to compare areas of three different shapes here. One of them is triangle AHO. The base of this triangle is 1, so area of AHO is 1 half times base time, base is 1 and the height is AH. If you write down tangent of x, tangent of x is AH divided by 1. So AH is in fact tangent of x. So that area is tangent of x over 2. Now if I call the point of intersection B, I also have a triangle here, triangle BHO. So if I look at triangle BHO, that would give me one half, the base is the same base, and the height is this guy. If I call this one k, it is bk. Now, bk in the right triangle bko is in fact exactly sine of x. So this is sine of x over 2. And finally, if I look at the sector, so area of sector boh is equal to so this is a sector of the whole circle. The entire circle is pi r squared. The radius is 1, so the area of the entire circle is pi. And the portion is x over 2 pi. So the area of this x over 2. Now, area of the triangle BHO is the smallest one. So sine of x over 2 is less than or equal to. Area of the sector BHO is the next area. That's x over 2. An area of triangle AHO is the largest one. So that is tan of x over 2. In fact, the inequalities are strict, but I don't really care about that part. Okay, and this works for angles in the first quadrant. Now, let's take this one and apply it in our situation. I'm looking for 1 over k squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square all sides of this. So I will get sine squared of x is less than or equal to x squared less than or equal to tan squared of x. And I'm going to take the reciprocal of all sides, so I will get 1 over sine squared greater than or equal to 1 over x squared greater than or equal to cotan squared. Now, 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. And I'm going to rewrite it this way. Cosecant squared is 1 plus cotan squared. So I get this inequality, this chain of inequalities. Now I'm going to replace x by the angle k pi over 2m plus 1, where k ranges from 1 all the way to m. So if I do that, I will get sum of k equals 1 to m, cotan squared of k pi over 2m plus 1, less than or equal to the sum 1 over k pi over 2m plus 1 all squared 
k equals 1 to m less than or equal to the sum of 1 plus cotan squared of k pi over 2m plus 1 and k ranges from 1 to m. Now we evaluated the left side that was m times 2m minus 1 divided by 3. The middle part is a multiple of 1 over k squared. So if I bring the 2m plus 1 to the top and keep the pi at the bottom, all of that is a squared. So that's multiplied by 1 over k squared. k equals 1 to m, less than or equal to. So if 1's add up to m, and the rest is the same as the one on the left. OK, now I'm going to divide everything by 2m plus 1 squared times pi squared. So I will get m times 2m minus 1 over 3, multiply by pi squared, and divide by 2m plus 1 squared. That's less than or equal to the sum, 1 over k squared, and k ranges from 1 to m. And the right side is m over 2m plus 1 squared multiplied by pi squared plus m times 2m minus 1 times pi squared divided by 3 times 2m plus 1 squared. Now let's see what happens as m approaches infinity. So the limit of m times 2m minus 1 pi squared over 3 times 2m plus 1 squared as m approaches infinity is equal to the leading coefficient on top is 2 pi squared the leading coefficient at the bottom is 3 times 4, which is 12. So that limit is pi squared over 6. On the right side, limit of m pi squared over 2m plus 1 squared as m approaches infinity is 0 because at the bottom we have a quadratic, on top we have linear. And the other one is the exact same thing. Limit of m times 2m minus 1 pi squared over 3 times 2m plus 1 squared. That's the exact same thing. So that's pi squared over 6. So in fact, the right side converges to pi squared over 6, and so does the left side, pi squared over 6, which means the middle, so by the squeeze theorem, limit as m approaches infinity, of sum of 1 over k squared as k ranges from 1 to m is in fact pi squared over 6. And this is exactly the sum of 1 over k squared as k goes from 1 to infinity, which is exactly what I was interested in. If you like this video, I would love it if you could leave your feedback by commenting below this video or simply hitting the like button. That would help me understand what would benefit you the most and it also helps others find this video. I will see you in another video.